Hello, I'm Anthony Chan from Reading in the United Kingdom, and I'm a consultant rheumatologist reporting here at the ACR 20 full stop. I've been covering and looking at the new treatments in axial spondyloarthritis. And there are two very interesting posters from today, which I'd like to kind of share with you, uh, which describes new treatments in axial spondyloarthritis. And this is with the selective JAK1 inhibitor, Upadacitinib, of which I'm going to call UPA. Uh, and this uh, has kind of taught us about new things about this treatment. Now, the, the data was first presented uh, last year, at the end of last year, published uh, in Lancet with the SELECT Axis 1 study uh, by Van Heide, which showed that UPA uh, compared to placebo was able to achieve an ASAS 40 or 52% versus 26% in the placebo group. And these two other posters today uh, kind of extends the, the, the data from the, the SELECT 1 Axis study. The first is poster number 369, which looked at the issue of pain. Now, we know that in patients with excess spondyloarthritis, spinal pain and also peripheral joint pain can be quite a significant factor that can affect their function. In this study, they looked at the aspect of pain and they looked at the groups which first uh, received UPA and versus placebo as well. They looked at different measures, including patient global assessment and also BASTI. The best eye, as you know, is the BAF ankylosing spondylitis disease activity score. And then they looked at the various different questions, such as question two and three. And what they showed was that there was, as, as, as early as week two in the uh, UPA group, they managed to achieve uh, improvement in the pain levels. And also in the patients who switch after a period of placebo for 14 weeks, where they switched over to the UPA group, that again, these patients also benefited from the switch to UPA. And this was seen up to week 64, where there was an improvement in their pain at 30, 50, and 70% of improvement of pain compared to baseline. So I think that is very uh, in interesting and also uh, gives us a lot of uh, hope for the future in regards to new treatment for our patients with axial spondyloarthritis. The, the next poster is poster 886, which looks at the aspect of um, the effect of UPA on, on remission scores in patients with axial spondyloarthritis. They use the uh, ASA score called uh, ASA special remission, ASA PR, and then also looked at how this correlated with disease activity scores. They used the ASTA score. The ASTA score can be um, differentiated into um, low disease activity um, or moderate disease activity or high disease activity. And what they found was in the, in the, in the group where they had UPA from the start uh, and, and the assessment at week 14, 19% of these patients achieve uh, ASAS partial remission. And that's a very high score in terms of uh, improvement compared to baseline. And in the placebo group where they switched over after 14 weeks and they reassessed them again at week uh, 32, and they also found that 33% of these patients again achieve ASAS partial remission. Now, the majority of these patients who achieve ASAS PR also achieve very low disease activity uh, or inactive disease scores on their ASTAS. Again, I think this shows us that the benefit of the, uh, the treatment can be on uh, axial spondyloarthritis in terms of achieving high scores uh, in terms of partial remission. Now, these two posters today uh, supplement the, uh, the data that we, we heard uh, last year about the effect of UPA. And for us, we are looking for new mechanisms of action in the treatment of uh, axial spondyloarthritis. We have obviously biologic drugs, uh, TNF inhibitors, TNF blockers. We have interleukin-17 blockers. So again, this opens up a new area for, for, for study. And obviously, we'll need uh, further studies. We'll need to uh, look at the effect of uh, JAK inhibitors uh, beyond uh, this study. But again, I think this gives us hope in terms of our management of our patients. Uh, with axial spondyloarthritis. I'm Anthony Chan. I'm uh, reporting from ACR20. Uh, thank you for listening today, and I hope to share with you further uh, news from the, the conference. Thank you very much.